The sixth speaker, code 198, will be answering the question, what can be done to alleviate Venezuela's economic crisis? Speaker 198. After allegations of sexual harassment were dropped, Bill Cosby started hosting local forums on sexual assault. That's basically like the Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, hosting a summit called Power to the People. <laughs> An article by Foreign Policy explains on June 15th of 2017, Nicolas Maduro's government in Venezuela has become increasingly repressive throughout the course of their rule, not only undermining democracy, but undermining the potential for a strong Venezuelan economy. Indeed, the lack of economic diversification in Venezuela, as well as the mismanagement of natural resources like oil, have plunged the country into a desperate economic crisis, one that's lasted for over a year now. And the economic crisis is far from just an economic problem. It's one that's putting thousands of Venezuelans without food security, making it imperative that we're asking, what can be done to alleviate Venezuela's economic crisis? The answer is that the Maduro government must take meaningful economic reforms into its hands. First, by emboldening private corporations. Second, by paying back international creditors. And finally, by subsidizing agricultural products. In early 2017, United Airlines decided to stop all of its flights to Venezuela. People were wondering why. I mean, between United and Venezuela, what could go wrong? <laughs> the first way that the Venezuelan government under Maduro can alleviate the country's economic crisis is by emboldening private corporations. An article by the BBC explains on June 7th of 2017 that a number of different private corporations, from General Motors to Colgate Toothpaste, even to tire companies, are now pulling their businesses out of Venezuela, largely because they can't access the raw materials in the country they need that are often imported from other states around them. If private corporations in the country fail, Maduro's government will fail as well. And thus, they can make a fix by emboldening these corporations. An article by the New York Times explains on June 21st of 2017, just a couple of days ago, that Venezuela's government has increasingly distanced themselves from the organization of American states. These states are the same ones that provide raw materials to companies in Venezuela, allowing them to continue economic prosperity. So if the economic crisis needs to be alleviated, then the government of Maduro must enter into negotiations with the OAS, or Organization of American States, for example, to perhaps trade democratic reform for trade relationships with these countries. And that wouldn't just benefit manufacturing or industry in the country, it could benefit the oil industry as well, one that the Venezuelan economy is heavily reliant on. Because if the government is encouraging an environment friendly for public or rather private businesses, it could also encourage reinvestment in the Venezuelan oil sector, encouraging the country to be sustainable not only in 2017, but far into the future. Venezuela's economic problems aren't a new thing. Indeed, they've been going on for quite some time now, which has put Venezuela in quite a bit of debt. The second way the Maduro government can alleviate his country's economic crisis is by paying back foreign creditors. As an article by the Wall Street Journal quantifies on June 15th of 2017, the Maduro government currently owes $56 billion to foreign creditors, 2.5 billion of that to the United States alone. If these kind of fiscal mismanagement problems continue to go on, the Venezuelan economy could default, essentially bankrupting itself making it unable to go on in the eyes of the international community. Again, that's a problem that the Maduro government in Venezuela can solve. Because as an article by the Washington Post explains on June 7th of 2017, organizations like the IMF are already interested in supporting the Venezuelan economy. A collapse of an economy like Venezuela isn't good for anyone. And if Maduro's government were to reach out to the IMF, perhaps initiating a debt restructuring pattern in the country, that would help them pay back their foreign creditors, their credit rating could be improved, 
perhaps improving their perception in the eyes of the international community, and even improving investment in the country. And it's actually a feasible step, because as an article by the Brookings Institution explains, on May 31st of 2017, the Maduro government is incentivized to ensure that the economy in Venezuela doesn't default. If the economy fails, Maduro's political power does as well, making it incentivized to pursue the step of reform in paying back foreign creditors. When Venezuelans head to their local grocery stores, they'll find something interesting on the shelves. Nothing at all. <laughs> the final way the Maduro's government can improve the status of the Venezuelan economy or alleviate the economic crisis is by subsidizing key agricultural products. That same Brookings report from May 31st of 2017 explains, 75% of Venezuelans over the last year have lost 20 pounds. The severe food crisis in the country that's largely a product of the lack of subsistence and commercial agriculture in the country is not only an economic but a human problem. And if Maduro's government wants to seek to alleviate this economic crisis, they must start with the agricultural industry. As an article by Foreign Policy explains on June 14th of 2017, for years, the Venezuelan government has subsidized the oil industry in the country, an industry that's been heavily volatile and not all that profitable when it comes to sustainability. Instead of continuing to subsidize that industry so heavily, the government could channel over subsidies or resources to agricultural products, perhaps commercial farming initiatives like tractors or even seeds for subsistence agricultural farmers. Plenty of the Venezuelan economy is based on its agricultural resources. And if people don't have the resources to even start up agricultural subsidies or rather profits, the country will not only be in an economic crisis, but in a humanitarian crisis as well. So when considering the future of the Venezuelan economy, it's necessary to ask, what can be done to alleviate Venezuela's economic crisis? The answer is that the Maduro government needs to make meaningful economic reform. First, by emboldening private corporations. Second, by paying back foreign creditors. And finally, by operating or initiating agricultural subsidies. We can only hope that the Venezuelan government truly does make reform perhaps not only to the economic status of the country, but democracy as well. So hosting a summit like Power to the People may not be such a difficult goal. Speaker 198 will be questioned by speaker 120. Nice. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about your first point. So you said that the nation should empower its oil industry, but in your third point you said that subsidies to such an unsustainable industry is counterintuitive. How would you reckon this claim? So my first point was solely about emboldening private corporations. I mentioned, however, that if the country encouraged a business-friendly environment, it could encourage the oil industry as well. However, that's a private initiative, not on a state level like subsidies I mentioned in my third point. But given how volatile the oil industry has been around the world, why would Venezuela go towards strengthening its oil industry and rather not look towards diversifying their economy? Again, that's what I was arguing in my first point. My first point was about emboldening private corporations in the country, not ones that invest in oil. A byproduct of that may be that the oil industry flourishes, but that shouldn't be the Venezuelan economy's priority. So let's talk about your second point. So you say that Venezuela needs to strengthen the relationship with its creditors, right? Yeah. But given that the International Monetary Fund oftentimes creates a cycle of debt through continued bailout programs, how can this create sustainable economic growth in Venezuela? And you're right. Appealing to an international creditor like the IMF is far from a perfect solution. But given the kind of debt levels that Venezuelans are in right now, appealing to the IMF, perhaps getting trapped in that cycle, is a lot better than defaulting on their loans. But we've seen from countries like Greece that on this track of relying on the International Monetary Fund, wouldn't Venezuela just continue to falter much like the European country of Greece? Again, it's not a perfect solution. Obviously, the IMF, like any other supranational organization, has its flaws like you point out in Greece. 
But the IMF is still far and away the best solution for Venezuela at this point. So in your final point, you talk about subsidies to the agricultural industry, right? Yeah. But wouldn't more subsidies continue to create even more debt for the Venezuelan economy, something you want to solve in your second point? That's what I mentioned at the beginning of my third point. Currently, Venezuela heavily, Venezuela heavily subsidizes their oil industry. One that you mentioned is pretty volatile. Transferring subsidies or reallocating the Venezuelan government, or rather budget, away from oil and towards agriculture would benefit agriculture without cash strapping the Venezuelan government. Thank you.